Dr. Brown. Uh, it's been a long time that you've been involved in telemedicine and in, and in the ATA. And I was wondering if you could give us your take on, say, looking back perhaps 10 years ago, what it was like then and uh, what it's like today, the, the big difference. Sure. How about I go back 40 years? Well, uh, because, uh, you know, I think... <laughs> you may. <laughs> I may. Thank you. Because I think, you know, telemedicine has uh, been on a long cycle. I, mm -hmm. I think it's a 50-year revolution that we're in the middle of. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, 40 years ago, it started out as an oddity, uh, a rarity. Uh, some people had some ideas of using video conferencing technology mm -hmm. for uh, rural health care. Uh, we used hardware-based devices and satellite systems and expensive private networks. Mm -hmm. uh, and it kind of worked, but it wasn't quite ready to, to grow where it should. And then over time, we became pretty good at the rural stuff. But I think what you're seeing now, just in the last several years, mm -hmm. is kind of a whole new wave of activity and a whole new wave of success around you know, telemedicine and virtual healthcare. I think what you've got now is that you know, we've got the internet, uh, people have a, they understand PCs, everyone's got a smartphone. We're starting to see M Health and wireless health. We're starting to see all the things that are driving telemedicine to the next level, making it cheaper, better, and faster. And also a lot of public awareness, so people kind of get it. People have the smartphone in their hand, and they understand what it can do for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and so people are understanding the technology and now starting to really implement it at a deeper level. And do you think, uh, uh, it's not about uh, just video conferencing anymore. It's not about just consulting a doctor. Right. And so do you think that most people get that, the consumers? Uh, well, that's a good question. I mean, the word telemedicine sometimes can be a bit confusing mm -hmm. just because it doesn't have a real clear definition. Uh, sometimes I call it virtual healthcare because it's really about all the different things that, that you can do uh, to support your healthcare over a distance. It's about collaboration. It's about remote monitoring. It's even e-consult you know, secure email, these are all things that are used to support uh, patient care. To me, that's all part of the telemedicine that we're developing. And for you, what is the biggest hope for, what, what's your biggest hope for the growth of telemedicine? Uh, my hope the is, it's, it's pretty simple. You know, my passion is really about improving healthcare. And I think that where we're going in healthcare, basically every single new program or initiative needs to think about how telemedicine, how virtual health care, you know, care technologies can support their program because it's all about better quality of care and it's all about better value in care and better health for populations. And I think if people start to understand uh, the role of virtual health care, you will see it in every single program out there. Can you tell me just a little bit about what, um, how you employ telemedicine at Ontario Healthcare? Sure. Uh, we've, uh, we've got something called the Ontario Telemedicine Network, which we've, uh, uh, has been live now for seven years, and it's actually a provincial network. It's uh, membership-based, and we work with about 1,100 organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, like the history of telemedicine, uh, rural health care has mm -hmm. been number one for us, and uh, still is our most uh, active and important application. We've also moved into uh, telehome care, remote monitoring with coaching. Wow. Uh, we have uh, e-consult service. We have a lot of education services. And of course, we're thinking about a lot of other things as well that we can do to benefit the healthcare system. We, uh, last year, we did about three, over 300,000 uh, remote video conferencing consultations, wow. as well as the other services we provide. And if you look at the travel, uh, it's actually, uh, for the folks who use telemedicine, uh, if they'd actually traveled, they would have traveled 150 million miles. Uh, wow, which is great real, numbers. Yeah, and that's numbers. actually enough to go to yeah. the moon and back 313 times. Wow. So there you go. That's terrific. Yeah. So um, I understand that you are about to become president of the ATA. Not yet, not quite yet, but soon. <laughs> right, very soon, another day <laughs> or so. A few hours, right. or another day or so. Um, I'm wondering what your, what's top of your agenda? Uh, you know, we've already actually hit on it because for me, top of the agenda is really for the broader healthcare community, for the payers, mm -hmm. for the government, for the health mm -hmm. providers out there to really understand how telemedicine fits into their agendas and, and the impact it can have on, on improving healthcare mm -hmm. and healthcare value. And how can you help? push that along? Well, we're pushing that along through a whole bunch of things. Uh, mm -hmm. A big role for ATA is really around advocacy and policy. Mm -hmm. uh, very exciting right now in the U.S. is that 
there's 18 states that actually have parity laws, uh, meaning that telemedicine is paid for by private insurers. Uh, and there's legislation in about 30 states right now that's in development. So there's a huge wave of activity out there and, and a, a whole new understanding of, of just how important telemedicine is. And could you speak just briefly because, you know, we tend to have rose-colored glasses on sometimes. Sure. Could you speak briefly to the challenges, the, the yeah. major challenges that... Sure. Oh, yeah, there's still basis. lots of stuff yeah. for us to do. Yeah. So there's lots of barriers, and I think I hit on one, which is, you know, payment and reimbursement. Uh, there's issues mm -hmm. of licensure, so cross-state mm -hmm. licensure is a huge issue in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's really the issue of business models, you know, so how, to, how do you figure out how to pay for it? How do you figure out how to harvest the benefits mm -hmm. uh, once you invest in this technology? That's requiring a lot of thinking. Uh, one of the things that's not really a barrier anymore is the technology itself. So we have lots of great technology, and we can always use new inventions, but we have lots of stuff. So it's really thinking about how to deploy that within our healthcare system, how to make it big, how to scale it so mm -hmm. that it really provides a true impact for the population.